appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service, and everyday low prices. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Friday, April the 5th, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Premier David Byrd is confident that Bermuda will be removed from the European Union blacklist of non-cooperative tax jurisdictions. Mr. Byrd says the error has been rectified and inferred that action by the EU is imminent. We understood that the reason why this happened was due to a minor technical omission. I had spoken about that on the floor of the House of Assembly. Unfortunately, uh, two lines which were uh, soon to be similar were different and were removed by the editors in the drafting section. That has now been cleared up. Upon us being pointed out, it was immediately cleared up. Uh, the conversations that I had in Brussels, um, I want to say last week, uh, the conversations of which the Minister of Finance continue, uh, recognize that uh, Europe recognizes our position and we fully expect to be delisted at the earliest possible opportunity. Uh, but it gives us an occasion, again, to make sure we continue to engage with our European partners, as it is very important for us to have good relations with the European Union. And I'm sure, despite this minor setback, that those good relations will continue. And Mr. Byrd just returned from talks with the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C. In other news, eight aspiring entrepreneurs have completed a 12-month program with the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation. Mike Sharp reports. Premier David Burt congratulated the participants in the Enterprise Bermuda Incubator Program. The chairman of BEDC, Neville Grant, spoke briefly about the program. I am thrilled to see the growth of the Enterprise Bermuda Incubator. Since the launch last year, the incubator has grown from six participants in 2018 to eight participants this year. The 2019 graduating class is Lakeisha Wolf. Sandra Dill, Kim Casey, Nadia Laws, Orion Hudson, Fiona Douglas, Marcus Keynes, and Carl Vincent. Ms. Wolf, Ms. Laws, and Mr. Keynes spoke about their new businesses. Um, my name is Lakeisha Wolf, and I am the owner and founder of A New Life Consulting. And my business provides help for the physically impaired and seniors. And um, I thought of this business because I wanted to provide my experience of being physically impaired for the physically impaired community in Bermuda to help make that difference for them. And being part of the Bermuda Enterprise Incubator has made it all real in just a matter of weeks and I'm excited because I am hoping to be open in just a few short weeks. So I am appreciative and very happy for the team at BEDC for what they've done for me so far. Hello, my name is Nadia Laws and I am the founder of The Media Maven. It is a communications and public relations consultancy. And the reason why I was really excited to be chosen for the incubator was because for me, it's an opportunity to leverage the success I've already had, but to grow to the next level. I've been able to utilize not only the educational resources, but also mentorship, which I'm really, really grateful for. Thanks. My name is Marcus Keynes. I am the owner and creator of the mobile app AO Bermuda, which is basically a directory of all things to do in Bermuda for tourists. Um, I originally built the app to educate tourists who um, don't know what to do necessarily when they come. Um, they can use this app to plan just about everything from activities, hotels, excursions, um, food, local events, and much more. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Mike. Coming up, Trash Collection, a new owner for the former HSBC building, Women Writers, your weekend weather forecast, and so much more. Stay with us. Welcome to Furniture Walk. At Furniture Walk, we have one of the island's widest selections of top brand home furnishings including 
Stearns and Foster, Craftmaster, Natutsi, Universal, Facet, and many more. Whether you're freshening up your living room or remodeling your entire home, we have all the brands and top quality furnishings you'll need. We also offer in-house financing. Can't find what you're looking for in-store? No problem! We can special order it for you. Our website has an even larger selection of the world's best furniture. Stop by our Paget store and we'll be happy to help you get on your way to finding the perfect selection for your home or office. Furniture Walk. Furnishing Bermuda's homes for over 30 years. Wednesday, the 24th of April, Michael Ramston returns to Bermuda, accompanied by fellow Christian apologists Alicia Wood and Vince Vitale, also of the Rabbi Zacharias International Ministries. Once again, we tackle the mysteries and misconceptions arising from the Christian worldview. Has Christianity failed? Where is God in suffering? And why believe in fairy tales? Plan to attend this fascinating forum at the Mid-Ocean Amphitheater on the 24th of April at 7.30. Free tickets at ptix.bm. Welcome back. Well, opposition leader Craig Kennanier says the people of Bermuda are still calling for the resumption of the two-day-a-week trash pickup. More in this report. Well, it's clear from the uh, minister that he doesn't believe that there's a rodent problem, but I don't know about you. I receive on a regular basis uh, videos and the likes uh, to my WhatsApp showing uh, how much the rodents, the rats, are prolific on the island throughout trash. Just the other night on ZBM, you saw where cats and the likes were all into the trash. This one-day pickup is proving to be a real challenge for Bermuda. Bermudians signed on back in 1998 to a two-day pickup. We have the same government who came into power under a two-day pickup now putting it back at one. And that's in the face of having uh, several brand new trucks in place. I would dare say, Mike, that Bermuda is willing to pay a little overtime to ensure that they get the trash picked up twice a week so that we can ensure that the place is clean, that we don't have the potential of rodents uh, uh, running around wild uh, uh, and of course getting out of hand because so many of them now are freely running amok of the trash. This is a major, major challenge and it isn't just as we saw uh, the site that you showed on your news the other night. There are several other sites like this here. Uh, the concern is real. Bermudians are speaking up about it on a regular basis. It is important that our minister understand that as of right now, Bermudians still want that two-day pickup and we don't have it. In other news, the former HSBC building on Front Street has new ownership. The Green family confirmed the purchase. It has been renamed Point House, and the 80,000 square foot space will undergo significant renovations. A spokesperson says it is intended that the ground floor will house some retail and leisure space with access directly from street level and other magnificent views of the harbor. A separate and distinctive entrance will cater to for the upper floors, which would be leased to office tenants. Some underground parking is also planned. Alexander Green, on behalf of the Green family, said, quote, We are confident that Point House will be an attractive first-class addition to Front Street and to the city's economy. The building will be fully accessible and environmentally sustainable. Seven Bermudian women in literature will be honored during Sunday afternoon's Crystal Butterfly Award. Atlantic Publishing is celebrating 40 years, and as you'll hear, the industry is thriving. The island has inspired literary giants, including Mark Twain and even William Shakespeare. But it's Bermuda's women authors, writers, historians, and playwrights who will be in the spotlight this weekend. It's a celebration of the writers themselves and the stories they tell. My sister bought me some very nice stationery. Um, and when I was at a book signing the other day, I was saying to people, be careful about that stationery. It can be very inspirational. You might end up writing a book, you know. <laughs> so she said, you have to write your cat stories down because once a year something hilarious would happen with the cats or kittens I was working with. And I thought, why not share the happy? 
Author, playwright, and publisher Siobhan K. Clark Joel says writing provided a positive platform to discuss social issues. I realized that um, I had a platform to address some of the things that you know are going on in our community. So a lot of my books are about um, heavy topics, um, sort of taboo topics like incest and mental illness. Um, you know, but it's written in a way that people can relate to. Um, can understand and learn from, hopefully. It's been 25 years since Transitions, Voices of Bermudian Women, a collection of writings by female authors, was published. It remains the benchmark of inspiring local authors to write with purpose. When I uh, published the book on incest, uh, I was really overwhelmed um, by the amount of, of ladies that came forward um, to, you know, to share their thoughts and their experiences, to thank me for giving them a voice, you know, through the writing. Um, some of them went to uh, counseling and um, sought support, you know, to, to cope with it. To help the wider community in one way, shape or form. There's a moral through here of let's treat everybody else the way we want to be treated, including the animals who can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was also putting voice to the new charity, which is called CATS, which stands for CATS Assistance Trapping Services. Mm -hmm. And they are doing the role, a lot of what the Bermuda Feline did, but the Bermuda Feline came to an end um, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. So not everybody knows that, so I want people to know about the new organization, CATS. And I want people to just treat each other, you know, your, your books are helping people understand each other mm -hmm. and have important conversations. And that can be done at any time of your life. The community is invited to join the celebration at the Cedarbridge Academy Discovery Room at 1.30 p.m. this Sunday, April 7th. There will be live entertainment, book signings, and a chance to meet Bermuda's top female authors. All are welcome. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. Tickets are $45 and are available at the Music Block and the Leopards Club or for delivery call 595-9841. Turning to weather news, more rain headed our way for the weekend. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for the details. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast on ZBM is brought to us by the good folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. We're dealing with the chance for some showers as we step into Saturday. There is a disturbance storm system approaching from the west. You can see some of these more vivid colors indicating cold, tall cloud tops. Under them, there are pockets of heavy rain and even a few thunderstorms off to our west. You can see showers are generally increasing in the western part of the Atlantic, so we will be uh, battling a few of them during our Saturday forecast. But tonight and this evening, we're in okay shape. 60 degrees is where we stand. We do have fairly active breezes from the east at 15 to 25 knots, humidity between 60 and 65 percent. Water temperatures up to 70 degrees. On the inside, we have one to two foot waves. On the outside, though, there are four to seven foot waves rolling around out there. So a small craft warning is in effect through Saturday morning. High tide is occurring at 954 tonight. So the tide's coming in through much of the evening. Then late tonight, it goes back out. Low tide at 402 Saturday morning. High tide again at 1008 Saturday. And then a low tide in the mid to late afternoon. Tonight, uh, looking at a breezy setup, and then eventually late tonight, showers will begin to increase from the west, lows around 63. Tomorrow will be a breezy day with some scattered showers out there as this disturbance scoots on through the area. Kind of an active weather day. Not a whole lot of rain, but there will be showers nonetheless. As we take a look at the uh, forecast and beyond that, here's Futurecast bringing those showers in slowly from the west. They'll be approaching to, uh, tonight. Uh, and again, through midnight, probably not much going on. But after 2 or 3 in the morning, showers become likely. And they're going to be more likely during the day tomorrow. Fast forward to 11 p.m. tomorrow evening. Most of the showers will be pooling away to the east. Maybe a few leftover stragglers will be nearby. Uh, but uh, we will be dealing with a quieter setup then into Sunday and Monday. Down into the Caribbean we go. We have showers here and there into Jamaica. Jamaica, Barbados, and to the Windward Islands. It's a hot time in Trinidad and Tobago, 90 degrees there. No tropical threats at this point on the calendar. That's certainly some good news. And the gateway forecast for eastern North America and eventually into London. Uh, you can see it's a milder weather pattern. We're beginning to recover from the recent chilly weather. So it's a more spring-like, April-like weather pattern for Saturday. Toronto back up to 54. Uh, that's around 12 Celsius. In New York City, scattered showers there. Boston, 64. A nice improvement after some snow 
uh, overnight uh, into early Saturday morning in the mountains west of uh, Boston into the Berkshire Mountains. Atlanta's back up to 75, more spring like there, warm and scattered thunderstorms into Miami and in London, England in April 55. That looks nice. That's about 12 and a half degrees Celsius. So there are the showers for Saturday. Sunday and Monday turning a little quieter. Tuesday looking really nice out there. Then the clouds begin to thicken. The breeze picks up from the south and west, and we're looking at a more widespread round of showers rolling in late Wednesday. So Wednesday showers. Wouldn't be shocked if we have a rumble of thunder at some point on Saturday as well. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BFNM, so am I. My, half of my family always been seen to be with Bermuda Fire Marine. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because right then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BFNM. I'm quite happy with it. And you're watching the Friday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Well, disruption can take many forms, but you probably won't find a bulldog, some fine art, or a century-old telescope to be all that disruptive. But Butler University in the U.S. state of Indiana does, and it's transforming the way students learn about the insurance industry. Tony Waterman has more. When 27 college students arrive on Bermuda's shores, you probably think spring break. But for these Butler University undergrads, this trip is more work than play. The ordinary sort of investment world. It's been nearly two years since Butler embarked on a first-of-its-kind student-run captive insurance company, which is licensed in Bermuda, managed by Aon, and audited by KPMG. Every year, the students visit mixing meetings with learning. Through that insurance license. The class has more than doubled in size. And while Bermuda is a strong incentive for anyone suffering through a cold Indiana winter, many here say hands-on learning is the main appeal. So I was actually reading through our animal mortality um, policy and found that we were undervaluing um, the payout or the limit uh, for our bomb sniffing dog. That's probably been one of my favorite things is just finding these real life problems and figuring out a way to fix them. Besides the bomb sniffing dog, the captive also covers Butler's fine art, a century old telescope, rare books, and Trip, the university mascot. But there is lots of talk about expanding. Right now we are talking about um, a drone project so we could geomap the campus to see the different flood levels on campus so we could help change the premium rates that we have going on. There's even scope to take the project beyond the Butler campus. We would like to become a class two or a class three captive to where we can begin selling this coverage that we were very good at uh, to other universities. While the money isn't rolling in quite yet, the captive is already paying dividends for the students. One recent grad took up a position requiring four years of experience. The model could also prove valuable to the insurance market, which is facing what has been described as a talent crisis. One of the challenges that we have as a firm is, is really is, is hiring talents. Uh, clearly these students are really bright, they're doing risk management, they're focused on actuarial and, and to have a supply of, of young people who are really keen on, on the insurance market is, is fantastic. It boils down to a problem of supply and demand. Four million baby boomers retire in the U.S. every year. But just 4% of millennials are interested in working in insurance. Do the math, and the industry is projected to have 400,000 open positions by 2020. We talk about our strategy being enabled by technology and data and analytics. Mm -hmm. And we will be looking to the generation of the future to, to assist us through that journey and to continue to keep us at the forefront of this wonderful world of risk. A world of risk which doesn't feel like a world away for these Butler students. And the advantage Thanks, Tony. Earl Bazin will have all the latest sports news after the break. Stay with us. You can count on us. 
Broccoli crowns, hot price, $2.99 per pound. Save $1.30 on Purdue Fresh Chicken Leg Quarters, only $1.59 per pound. Hunt Snack Pack Puddings, four packs, hot price, $1.79. Shop right, fresh frozen fruit, 12-ounce bag, only $2.99. Your choice of any fresh pet, refrigerated pet food, 20% off. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. At Argus, our interest is you. Each of you. Around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs. For their health. Home. Work. And future which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life because after all, our interest is you. At ProServe, we've got mail. Did you know at ProServe, we handle over 150,000 mail pieces per month. We have a full mail handler's license, secure, centrally located facilities, state-of-the-art digital printing, insertion, franking, and tracking systems even full mailroom operations management, along with experienced staff and the reliability to get your job done right. So whether the job is large or small, by hand or sprint pickup delivery, daily, weekly, monthly, or one-off project, we've got you covered from start to finish with email confirmation. At ProServe, we've got mail. Call 295-7619 or visit ProServe.bm and let's get it started. Turning to sports, a Bermuda Football Association doubleheader took place at the BAA field last night. Bermuda's under-16 netball team went down to Dominica in the John Pierre tournament, and a total of 13 players have signed with the new clubs for the upcoming cricket season. Earl Basin has the details and so much more in tonight's sports report. A total of eight goals were scored at the BAA field last evening during a Bermuda Football Association Premier and First Division doubleheader. In the Premier Division, Robin Hood would defeat Crossroads 2-1. to one. The opening goal would come in the 15th minute when a Dominique Williams low drive from the edge of the box beat Crossroads goalkeeper Deshaun Cooper's outstretched tan at the far post. In the 23rd minute, Antoine Russell doubled the Robin Hood lead when he caught Cooper off his line from some 40 yards out with a dipping volley. Crossroads would get on the board in the 87th minute when George A. Sanchez scored from 30 yards after Robin Hood goalkeeper Dale Eve slipped in his box and couldn't recover to save the Sanchez chip. In the opener, Flanagan's Onions have secured at least fifth place in the first division after they defeated St. David's 3-2. Flanagan's would get two goals from Mikhail Williams and one from Daniel Lehner, while Justin Pitcher and Kamali Davis scored for St. David's. Bermuda concluded competing in the 2019 Jean-Pierre Under-16 tournament in Antigua and Barbuda. Bermuda went into their final match of the tournament against Dominica and went down 36-24. to President of the Bermuda Netball Association, Kamal Evans, said the team had challenges, but they persevered. Despite a valiant effort, unfortunately, they had to contest with really poor officiating, and it, it really kind of demoralized the girls. I mean, they continued to fight hard, but... There are just some things that are beyond our control, and so much so to the point where we've been advised to form an official complaint, of which we will take into consideration in reference to what was witnessed by the umpiring panel that assesses the umpires. I just want to say that as the president, I am extremely proud of these young ladies. They have shown so much growth, not just in their NAPO play, but there were some breakthroughs that took place down here that really forced us to come to the realization that they are truly a team and truly operating on one accord. We couldn't ask for anything more than, than to see growth, and that's exactly what we did see, and we're very, very pleased with that. 
Jillian Tessera was back in action competing in the Bohain Spring International Horse Jumping event in Belgium and she was joined on the final day by Tyler Lopes. Tessera and Aluna D. Cantaro finished fifth competing in the 1.30 meter in two phases class. The pair were clock a clear first phase time of 54.30 and they were clock a clear second phase time of 24.69. Lopes and Hamlet D. Cantaro would compete in the same class and they would finish 85th clocking a time of 64.34 but they would have fifth 15 penalty fault points. Tessera and Maya Volo VD Mullendrift finished 50th competing in the 1.30 meter table A class. The pair clocked a time of 80.39, but they would have 13 penalty fault points. Jessica Lewis' preparation for the upcoming Parapan American Games began in earnest as she took to the track for the Snowbird Classic Track and Field Meet in Daytona. Lewis would win the T-53 women's 100-meter race in a time of 17.64. She would then finish second competing in the T-53 women's 400-meter race, crossing the line in a time of 104.44. Clocking a time of 34.19 would see Lewis finish the T-53 women's 200-meter race in first place. The Bermuda Cricket Board confirmed the 2019 transfers. A total of 13 players have signed for new clubs for the upcoming season. Southampton Rangers have lost the services of Dean Stevens and Ian Armstrong to Cleveland County, while Joshua Gilbert departed Somerset Cricket Club heading to Somerset Bridge. Lionel Can and Sheldon Caesar have joined the St. David's Cricket Club, while PHC pair Jerez Eve and Randy Bean are off to the Somerset Cricket Club. Danico Hollis and Casey Green have both headed east to the St. George's Cricket Club. Azai Burt competed in the Anai Pass 2019 Loretta Lynn's Area Regional Motocross Qualifier. Burt competing in the 51cc age group 4 to 6 year old class finished third overall. Burt would finish fourth in the first moto before crossing the line third in the second moto. Marcelo Wainwright and his Toronto Arrows rugby teammates scored early and often and from all across the pitch in the club's 64-31 win over the Utah Warriors. Nine different Arrows, including Wainwright, scored tries in the emphatic win at the Zion Bank Stadium, which saw the traveling Canadians set multiple Major League Rugby records. Most points scored by one team in a match, 64, and the most tries scored by one team in a match of nine. The North Atlantic Conference has announced its weekly awards for men's tennis and Thomas College swept two of the awards. One of the awards went to Bermuda's Jan Sutton, who was named Rookie of the Week. Sutton had a 4-0 combined weekend in singles and doubles. Bermuda Senshal Association will field nine athletes at the Bridgetown Burning Martial Arts Festival in Barbados. This is the third consecutive year that Bermuda has sent a contingent to Barbados to compete. And for the second year in a row, the team will feature junior Senda athletes. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Sweet eating cantaloupes, hot price, two for five dollars. Fresh certified Angus beef, top sirloin steak, eight ninety nine per pound. Old time honey wheat sliced bread, twenty ounce loaf, hot price four forty nine. Wholesome pantry almond milk, sixty four ounce carton, hot price four fifty nine. Family size twenty four ounce Kellogg's frosted or corn flakes, or raisin bran cereal, hot price seven ninety nine. All stores open Monday through Saturday until ten p.m. and Sunday nine a.m. to seven p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. I close my eyes and I can see the world that's waiting up for me that I call my own I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy We can live in a world that we design Cause every night I lie in bed The brightest colors fill my head a million dreams are keeping me away. Over time, your mattress goes through a lot. That's why at Dreams, our experts recommend you replace your mattress every eight years for a better night's sleep. Replace every eight years and sleep better with Dreams. For the world we're going to make. Made with care, handled with care, delivered with care. Now that's what Dreams are made of. Image Entertainment presents the Dunja Stand Up Comedy Show. Saturday, April 6th at the Ruth Seaton James Auditorium. From Los Angeles, California, 
It's Dale Harris from New York City, the pimp of comedy in sync. And your headliner, the human iPod, Janet J. Lamont. Wouldn't you love for Mr. Biggs to be your daddy? And he can sing to you like, take the trash out. Boy, you better take the trash out. Boy, I whoop your ass. <laughs> yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. I'll take it out. Local comedians are Eddie G and King Sumner. Hosted by me, Nadanja. Admission is $50. VIP, $100. Tickets on sale at BDA Tix, 27th Century Boutique, and Kitten Caboodle. Showtime is 8.30 p.m. It's Nadanja stand-up comedy show. Saturday, April 6th at the Ruth Seaton James Auditorium. This is an image <laughs> entertainment production. That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Good night.